So welcome guys back to another video in the channel. Today we're doing our match preview and predicted lineup for Arsenal's home game against Leeds United in the Premier League. Now, now, now we are going into this with quite bad form. We've got knocked out of the FA Cup to then proceed to only get four points out of the next 12 games, um, which has been pretty bad, to be honest, because after we got knocked out of that, we then beat Southampton. Um, then we drew Man United in a game which could have gone either way. And then we went and lose to Wolves, albeit two red cards. And then we go and lose to Aston Villa, even though there were one or two good performances in there from the likes of Matty Ryan and Martin Erdegaard. But for me, this is just, it's just going down the line again. And this is just not where we need it to be. We need to be in form, good, going into the game against Benfica, which by the way, is now being switched to Rome. So we don't even play at the Emirates. So it's going to be basically going to um, Lisbon, then going to Man City, then going to Italy, then going to Leicester. It's going to be all over the place. And this is just not good at the moment. Everything that's surrounding Saliba, that's surrounding around everything else at the club at the moment, it just looks like one of them situations we had one or two months ago where it's just all going downhill again. And it just goes to show that in a few results, in a few different instances, things can change very quickly. And, you know, that scene under Chelsea as well, under Thomas Tuchel, you know, we were like level on points. And now suddenly... Um, they're like, you know, in the top four race, they're one point behind Liverpool. So things change really quickly in this league. And, you know, we need to get ourselves back up because at the moment we do sit 11th. And that could change, I believe, if Southampton win their game in hand, they, they will definitely go above us, which is bad. Because then we'll be in thir we'll be in 12th and I think um, Crystal Palace could go f um, above us as well. So it could be 13th. So we really need to get our game in hand. And uh, Leeds have gone above us because they beat Crystal Palace. I believe that was 2-0. Um, obviously, in our last game... Oli Watkins scored an early goal, which really put a dent in our hopes, to be honest. And we look at the previous game uh, between Arsenal and Leeds. And that was, I believe, that was um, when Pepe got sent off and uh, Rafinha and Rodrigo hit the crossbars and stuff. And again, that went very good. But we should have easily lost that game 3 or 4-0. And a credit to Arsenal defended all right, I guess, when Pepe got sent off. And, you know, I'm pretty sure Rob Holding had a last minute header and he could have won us the game in that one. Um, but unfortunately, that didn't happen and it ended 0-0. You know, in, you know, both, you know, Leeds are a team that score a lot of goals. So for them to get a 0-0 against us, you know, especially when we were down to 10 men was quite surprising. I think they could have gone on to win that game. But credit to us to holding out with 10 men. But, you know, we need to keep 10 men on the pitch first and foremost, um, not get red cards, not blow away games like that. And second of all, this Leeds game is going to be very interesting for me. Very interesting. They're a team that just love to attack, love to press and run and run and run. How do we play them off the park? Do we let them come to us? Do, they, do we let them take the game to us? because we're um because you know um they're away or do we just um go for it and uh, see what they can do it'll be very interesting to see how we do approach this one and uh, we will be discussing this obviously with our opposition preview guest from a local football channel so we'll be doing that live later on but you know i do want to get straight into the predicted lineup now first of all starting off in goal burnt leno his suspension is over and he walks straight back into this team Credit to Matty Ryan, I thought he did brilliantly in the game against Aston Villa, it was just rubbish defending from Rob Holding, you know, um, Cedric made the mistake and you could you could even put Gabriel in there, but yeah, um, you know, Bert Lennon goes straight back in goal, he has an unborn goalkeeper, just don't do any stupid shenanigans again because we need someone like Leno throughout the rest of the season because he has been really good. Moving into our back four now, first of all, on the right-hand side, I will be going with Cedric Suarez. Um, now, I'm going to put him on right-back because he is our best right-back. He's not a left-back, he's a right-back. Um, so I will put him into the side now. And um, left-back, I'll be going with Kieran Tierney now. Um, the report's coming out that it was only fatigue. I think that was Ornstein or Wheatley. One of them put it out there um, that it was fatigue that led to you know Tierney having a cramp. But I think him, party, some of these key, key players, we need them to stay fit now for the rest of this season because now we're going into the stage of the season where we need our players fit and we need to, and this is going to be the onus is now going to go on Arteta to keep these players fit rotate and still get results this is going to be a test of our squad a test of the physios to see if they can keep these players fit because we need to challenge at the Europa League level and we need to have a go in the Premier League as well because I'm not going to sit here and say again like the last two years oh let's just focus on the Europa no we need to focus on both sides because the league is so open and you know maybe a few results we string together and we're suddenly back up there again you know Leicester Man City they're good opportunities for us so we can't be letting that one down and someone like Kieran has to be integral to that and he is he's such a 
big part of this squad. So, you know, Kieran Tini has to go into left back for me for this one. Um, in, into the centre backs now, first of all, Gabriel. Um, yes, he did play in that last game. He was shaky at times, but again, he is, you know, slowly getting himself back to full fitness now. He has been struggling a bit um, with the corona and stuff. So, you know, you, you kind of have to let him off for a bit, don't you? Um, but yeah, next to him, I'll be going with Pablo Marie. He did end up getting the bench, um, but he didn't come on. What a surprise, because we don't want to pay the one million. I think now, pay the one million. We're well into February now, so um, that's a good opportunity now to play Pablo Marie, getting back into the side. Again, another one who's going to be really helpful for us, you know, rotating between the Europa League and the Premier League. And I think we should play him next to Gabriel, to be honest. Why not? You know, everyone, you know, in the past used to play two right-sided centre-backs. I don't see why you have to play one right-sided centre-back and one left-sided centre-back. Why can't you just play two left-sided centre-backs? Because at times I saw Gabriel on the right-hand side. So why can't you do something like that? I'm not too sure, but... We'll just see how Arteta deals with it, but I'll put them both into the side, see how they do, because in the Premier League now, we need to try things differently. We need to try to take a different approach so we can start climbing that table, because I still think we can, and despite how crap we have been, this league is still as open as it is, so we need to take advantage of it. So I'll be going with Gabriel and Marie as my backline pairing. Moving into the midfield now, first of all, on the right hand side, Martin Erdegaard. Now I'm going to put him straight into the side because I thought at times he was in that right midfield spot in, that, um, in the back end of the Aston Villa game and I thought he played quite well. So I'm going to put him in for this game. We need legs, we need energy, we need drive, we need hunger and passion and that's what I saw from Erdegaard against Aston Villa and that's what we need in this game against Leeds. So I'll put him straight from the start. Um, in the middle, I will go with Emil Smith-Rowe. Again, um, he was someone who looked better when Erdegaard came on. You know, I think he gave him a bit more freedom to, you know, go into those central spots, try and make runs in behind because, you know, Emil Smith-Rowe, he's been fatigued a bit but hopefully this week off that we have had since the Villa game will help him out a bit because, again, we need these players for the Europa League. Luckily, Smith Rowe, you know, he had that one injury uh, um, a year ago and now he looks better and he's not really getting any knocks or anything, so that's good to see. But we just need to keep these players fit, you know, especially going into these Europa League games where probably most of our focus will go as, um, you know, maybe hypocritically saying, but in theory, yes, that's where our focus will be, unfortunately. But next to him, I will go with El Nenny. Um, main reason is um, he's he's a defensive player, and if we're gonna have two more attacking players, I think it's best we have one, you know, just rock, you know, sort of player, you know, some sort of shield. And I think he can do that for us. I'm not gonna bring Thomas Partey into the side. Main reason is I don't want I don't want him risked because we need him for Europa League, and he's a player that again, you, you know, playing him somewhere against Benfica will help us a lot because he's so. Good good in these European games so um, I'll say party for Benfica and I'm pretty sure he's back as well but we'll look at that in our news video but that's the midfield I'll be going with Moving into our front three now, first of all on the right hand side, Bukai Yu Saka. We are going to put Saka straight back into the, uh, straight into the side again. He wasn't the most um, helpful, I guess, in the Aston Villa game. I thought Grealish and, you know, who was that left back for them? Was it Target? Yeah, Target. I thought he did really well against him. So Saka hopefully comes up against in this uh, um, lead side. And on the counter attack, you know, we could pick them off quite well. And I think Saka will be integral to that. So, you know, if we're putting out attacking side, then. You know, we can cause them some damage. So Saka on the right hand side, on the left hand side, I'll be going Nicola Pepe. I'm going to keep playing Pepe. I could have easily said here, let's put in Martinelli. Let's put Aubameyang on the left and put maybe Lacazette down the middle. I'm going to stick with my guns. I'm going to stick with Pepe because I know what this guy can do. And especially in this sort of game, I think he can cause Leeds some trouble. Yes, he got sent off, um, but hopefully don't do that again. And I'll be going with Pepe. Up front as the main striker, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now, I'm going to put my faith in him. I'm going to put the faith in my captain for this game because, you know, we need him back in form. We need him scoring. Yes, he's had a few personal issues off the pitch. Yes, obviously, they're going to be tough mentally for you. But again, you're a footballer. You're captain for Arsenal Football Club. You need to step up and you need to give all you can for the pitch. So, yeah, Aubameyang up front for me. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave your predictions and thoughts in the comment section down below. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.